And now to Rick's reviews. We were just joking about Dr. Seuss in the break and how we do all the funny voices reading to our kids. <laughs> now we have Rick joining us in studio with his review of a classic artist with yep. a modern biopic. Yeah, you know, I almost wore that same outfit that you just showed there. <laughs> I'm so glad I didn't. It would have been horrible. <laughs> hey, you know, up until, uh, up in January, I thought the, this year's movie releases were the Titanic. It was yes. a disaster. I've now decided after this week, it's the Titanic if the Hindenburg was above it and the people making the Etzel were sitting on the deck of the Titanic. This disaster gets worse and worse. I saw, really? two, I saw two movies this week that were both bad, so I'm picking the best of the two to review, and that's Bob Marley, One Love. Okay, so many people had a lot put into this because, you know, they love his music. And you know what? I have no problem with his music. Yeah. The, the one thing I hope comes out of this is it introduces his music to a new generation, mm -hmm. and that's, you know, he He's had one album on the on the Billboard chart for 820 weeks, so his music's out there. But as a biopic, what I didn't like about this is that it it really just focuses down on two years. It starts in 1976 when when they try to assassinate Marley and, and his his family, uh, and then it goes to the next to 77 when he does this self-imposed. Uh, uh, he sends himself to England mm -hmm. to get away from all the violence and everything. And so we only have this sort of two years. We get, a, we get some occasional flashbacks of him as a child and as a teen. But what, you know, the funny thing is it starts, the movie opens with Ziggy Marley talking about, that, that's Bob's son, sorry, mm -hmm. uh, talking about how he was on set to make sure this was a story that told his, his dad's story, that let us know what his dad was thinking while this was all going on. And that's a great promise, but it doesn't come through. Really? All we see are a bunch, we see a, a handful of musical performances, which are okay, tied together by some historical facts that we could have got out of Wikipedia. And so there's no great insight into it. And so you've got uh, Kingsley Bendar uh, playing, playing Marley, and he's okay, but he's really kind of made a career out of playing political figures. He's played Obama, he's played Malcolm X, and now he's, he's doing Marley. And he, you know what, you can't just slap a, a dreadlock wig on somebody and have him give him a Jamaican accent and get the essence of the person. He never finds it. I do think the woman who plays uh, Bob Marley's wife, Rita uh, uh, Lynch, is is very good. Okay. She gets the only emotional moments and she really gives us the only insight when she talks about how Marley put his career among his family and his kids and everything. But that's just tiny insights. As a biopic, it should have been more. And especially when you get the promise at the beginning. Yes, and so with all that said, was there good costuming? Was there good sound production? All the things we expect out of his legacy and the way he changed music in his time. No, because there's no insight into that. Mm. We start in, in, in like I said, in 1970. So he's already established his musical sound. Yeah. He's already brought the other ska and reggae. I, I would have loved to see where that came from, where his passion came from music. I mean, his father rejected him as a child. Did music save him? I, well, I don't know. This movie yeah. doesn't show that. And that's what's missing out of this. You know, we hear the music, and that's great, but I can buy the album. Yeah. And hear the, you know, hear the original music and hear a lot more work. Yeah. So no, I think as a biopic, it just misses the boat because it doesn't go deep enough. It's superficial. Oh, so what's your grade for it? I'm giving it a C minus. Uh, you know, it's, again, of the two movies opening this week, it makes you, Bob Marley looks like an Oscar contender compared to Madam Webb. I was going to say, what was the other one? It was oh, Madam Webb. Madam Webb was the terrible. latest Marvel movie. And if it wasn't for the movie Morbius, Madam Webb would be the worst Marvel movie ever. That's tough news for Marvel fans. <laughs> yeah. You know what? We're getting used to it because yeah. there's been this downhill grade of Marvel films lately, and this one really does crash and burn. Oh, that's too bad. Okay, so we're going to meet with Rick next week, but first we need to go to break so we can introduce you to our pet of the week.